vegans, the relatively new breed of humans that is changing everything. They're changing how humanity has lived since its beginning and somehow changing and deciding their biologically ideal diet. They say it's the end of meat for humanity, but at the same time, together with hippie vegan scientists, they're making fake meat out of salad. I mean, it's pretty good, I'll give them that. So, our ancestors must be ashamed of this rising group of humans called vegans. And as a vegan myself, I totally agree. I'm aware that we are here today, all because of what our ancestors did for us, and vegans are destroying it all. But let's be honest, who cares? In this video, I'm going to talk about how our ancestors are ashamed of vegans, and how exactly it doesn't matter. Well, first of all, it is not the smartest, but instead, absolutely nonsensical to compare our morality to our ancestors, not just because they lived in a much different environment, but also had lower moral standards as a whole. When we bring up our ancestors with the intention to justify the consumption of animal products today, we mean humans from thousands of years ago, which was a time when agriculture was insufficient or was not even a thing. So hunting animals for food, fishing, and eventually farming of animals and consumption of their flesh and milk used to be an absolute necessity for them to survive and thrive. To be exact, it is called circle of life. But as we all know, things have changed. But hold on, shouldn't what we're supposed to be eating be the same, regardless of how our culture and society progress? Well, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and the British Dietetic Association, two of the largest organizations of nutrition professionals in the world, confirm that a well-planned whole food plant-based diet is nutritionally adequate and healthy in all stages of life including pregnancy, which means we can get all the essential nutrients we need from plants. The biological debate aside, if our ancestors had the abundance of food we have today, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't go out of their way and spend their energies and risk their lives to hunt giant mammoths. At least there's no question that them killing a mammoth just for them to enjoy carved stone cups of mammoth milk latte in the afternoon would just seem a bit wasteful. So according to our moral agency, because animal products are not required this should make all pain, fear, and suffering from the exploitation, torture, and slaughter that we inflict on animals in the modern days unnecessary. So our choice or lifestyle becomes an issue of morality and things become quite clear. People are starting to make the connection that their sensory pleasure does not justify what they do to others. So instead, they choose to step up and live vegan and enjoy what they grew up with in a different and less harmful way. For an in-depth summary of the ethics and core value of veganism, watch my previous video. Now, what about our cultures and traditions that extreme vegans are destroying? Isn't veganism rather a devolution of humanity. Well, if our more recent ancestors are still ashamed of vegans, they must also be ashamed that their descendants stood up against and banned slavery and racial segregation, gave women the right to vote, and are standing up for racial justice, giving women equal pay, rights, and power as men, legalizing same-sex marriage, and advocating for LGBTQ communities. Right? But who cares? Do you feel ashamed for supporting this moral and cultural evolution? Again, we all know, we are here today because our ancestors ate animals for thousands of years. So also, we certainly wouldn't be here if they didn't go to wars, kill each other, exploit, mutilate, or even physically assault others. Yet we say these things are evil, and people who engage in those should be punished. We don't say these things should be continued because they've been done for thousands of years, and we should not base our morality on legality and existing laws. Plus, if you look at every single person that radically changed the history of humanity, every one of 
them was a lawbreaker. So this should be enough for you to know that what our ancestors did or what led us here does not matter or at least shouldn't dictate what we do today unless we learn from it to build a better world. Veganism is all about bringing peace to the world by avoiding exploitation, violence and suffering as much as possible, and learning to respect the basic fundamental right to live. But many of us are claiming against this movement based around justice and compassion by using the people who have those lower moral standards. In other words, what we're doing here is essentially using the same moral and value system that used to justify all those horrible things that we consider highly immoral today in order to avoid change and progress and stay stuck in our comfort zone when there's room for improvement. So why would we mind our ancestors who had lower moral standards than many of us being ashamed of us? Comparing our morality to and basing it on our ancestors to hold ourselves back from cultural change and progress of our morality, again, is not the smartest thing to do. Although veganism is an ethical philosophy, from a holistic perspective, it's not only about human and non-human animal ethics, but also the environment. Our consumption of mass-produced animals, including fish and wild fish, is one of the leading drivers of climate change, water and food scarcity, droughts, marine plastic pollution and ocean dead zones, and number one driver of deforestation around the globe. These issues are becoming more serious as the global human population keeps increasing, which again, our ancestors did not have to worry about, not even for a second. Plus, if we want to be proud descendants or ancestors, not only do we have to consider the future of our descendants, but also create a fair system that serves all humans. When it comes to feeding the world, it would be infeasible for every human to eat a decent amount of equally distributed meat and dairy without more deforestation which may cause irreversible climate change given how resource and land intensive the production of animal foods is and how much of it is already being occupied for livestock and their feed. We don't have the land. Also, in many countries including the US, our standard diet would not be possible without labor rights violation and exploitation of illegal immigrants and people of color at meat packing plants and imported goods contaminated with slave labor, which I'm sure many of our ancestors would not find problematic. Therefore, advocating for or recommending such diets today is not a responsible thing to do ethically, environmentally, ecologically, or holistically. I've made multiple videos explaining the details of those issues. If we don't change, not only our ancestors, but also our descendants and future generations of humanity will be ashamed of us for saying we are animal lovers and environmentalists while at the same time breeding billions of land animals into existence just to mass murder in weeks and feeding the majority of the produced food to those animals that did not have to exist while hundreds of millions of people are hungry, pulling trillions of fish out of the oceans every year, taking their lives for our taste preference, in other words, to satisfy our sensory pleasure, killing 46 million turkeys in order to be thankful every year, while standing up against the Yulin dog meat festival and animal abuse in general, confining a million animals in places where they do not belong, and forcing them to perform, being the ones to decide who lives and who dies, triggering some of the most threatening public health issues, including antibiotic resistance, depleting water and other resources, devastating land, and possibly destroying the planet for them to live on.